if you only know how to do one repair on your air conditioner, this is hands down the one that you should know about. I feel like every homeowner should be capable of replacing this component and doing it in a safe manner, saving you hundreds, if not thousands of dollars over the next several years. So let's get right into it. All right, so the first thing we wanna do is make sure that the power is turned off. Most commonly, you'll have a disconnect like this with either a little plastic plug that pulls out or you'll have a breaker, whichever is the case, uh, flip the breaker off or simply pull this out. You can set it on top or you can flip it upside down and it acts as a little storage spot um, in the upside down position. Next, we're gonna remove this side panel. Typically, there's a little electric hazard thing here so you know which panel to remove. I'm gonna be using my Klein multi-bit driver here. Um, this is a great handheld tool because it has all of these different um, sizes contained into one unit. And then if it's too long, you can also pop this out. So being as I have small uh, space here, I'm gonna actually use this without the handle to take it off on this side. You can find this tool in our Amazon store. Just go down to the link in the video description Click my favorite HVAC tools and you'll see all of these awesome tools that I use on a daily basis. All right, so we're gonna take this front cover off. So right back here is the part that we are after. This is called the capacitor. Now the basic function of this capacitor is it acts like a little battery and it gives the fan and the compressor a little jump, if you will, when they first start. Now, when these fail, there's a lot of signs that tell you that this has failed and you don't even need a tool or anything to verify that the capacitor is back. Now, before you touch anything, just observe this capacitor and see what the condition of that capacitor looks like. If it looks like this and has a mushroomed out top or bottom or is leaking fluid or looks like it has burns or has something caught in those terminals, it's safe to say that your capacitor is bad and that it needs to be replaced. But we will go into how to test your capacitor. Even if it looks normal like this one, this one is actually bad. And we'll show you that with a voltmeter. Now, being as this acts as a battery, this unit will hold a charge sometimes. And so it's very important that when you take this capacitor out, that you discharge these lines by jumping a screwdriver or something between all of the leads and that will effectively discharge this unit then you can go ahead and take it out all right so I'm gonna show you exactly how I would do this just so you know first I would just go ahead and arc these together while it's still attached to the unit uh, just for a little bit of additional safety and just FYI I have never gotten popped by one of these and for a long time I did not discharge the capacitors but you, you know you want to be as safe as possible so take those little extra steps and you can avoid uh, potential injuries i've heard of some people getting popped by that even after the power is off it's always a good idea to just snap a picture of this from multiple angles if you're not familiar with air conditioning and and how this wiring works and now that it's free hanging what we can do is we can go ahead and take off our brown wire Typically, you'll only have one wire on the fan terminal there. That's obviously for your fan. Now I'm gonna take my screwdriver and I'm gonna just jump these out. Let's go from this one to this one. Just jump all three of these. So now, if you had a normal AC unit, you wouldn't have these blue wires. So I'm gonna go ahead and take these off. These are for my hard start kit. I will have a separate video on what a hard start is and why it uh, is beneficial to have on your system. So typically, this is what you would see if you pulled off your capacitor. You'd have your brown wire there, so we'll remove that. We have one yellow that's on the hermetic pin there. So we're gonna remove that. And then we have a purple and a red on the C for common. So we'll go ahead and remove that. So now this is a free standing unit. We can see what the values are. Mine is a 45.5. We can kind of inspect this and we can actually test this with a multimeter to verify if this is good or bad. Okay, so we got our voltmeter. We're gonna set it over to this setting here. 
should be UF. That's for microfarads. So make sure that you have a voltmeter that measures microfarads if you wanna do this test. You can get one for pretty cheap um, and it's very easy to do. So we're just gonna take one pin, we're gonna put it on C and then we're gonna take one and we're gonna put it on fan. As you can see, we've got 4.6. And if you remember this five right here, that is for the fan and 45 is for the compressor. So plus or minus 5%. So we're within that range at 4.6. Now we're gonna go from common to hermetic. And as you can see, we have zero. Now, this is totally ironic and a coincidence, but my capacitor failed at the very end of summer last year. And so this is a bad capacitor, but it looks totally normal. So this is a perfectly good brand new capacitor. Now we're gonna test this one just for giggles. So between C and fan, <clears throat> we've got 4.9, which is right where we want it. And between common to hermetic or compressor, we've got 35.3, so right where we want it. So that's what you should measure if you have a uh, voltmeter and you're testing your capacitor. Now, if you're unsure of what size capacitor your unit has and you don't wanna take the cover off to, uh, to look all that up, there is a simple solution and something that is uh, really handy, especially for an HVAC technician, but it could be very handy for a DIYer or a homeowner, and it's called the Turbo 200. Now this is basically a universal capacitor that has a bunch of different values and this will work on basically any AC unit. So we have common right in the center and then let's say our unit needed a 35-5 uh, capacity. So we would take this jumper and we would go from 25 to 10 that, and we add those two values together which create a 35. So then we would just attach the one wire that went to the 35 on the old capacitor to one of these pins, doesn't matter which one. And then the five would go to this pin for the fan. So you have options here. If you wanna pick up one of these universal ones and keep it in your junk drawer, that's a great way to go. But if you wanna open up your unit and just see what the values are on your capacitor, you can get one of these for about $10 can keep it in your junk drawer and that way when it's blazing hot outside you don't have to call an HVAC technician to come out and charge you probably $300 to replace a $10 part. You can do it yourself and get your cooling back up and running quickly. Well guys it is that easy to replace the capacitor on your air conditioner. I sincerely feel that each homeowner should be able to know how to do this safely and to be able to save that money when it comes to repairing your air conditioning in the middle of summer. Not only that, but you'll be able to do this repair a lot faster than having to call a technician in the middle of summer and have to wait for them to come out. So something that I advise all homeowners to do is just go ahead and pick up one of these capacitors, take the cover off your unit, of course with the power off, and see what the values are. You can order one on Amazon and just keep it in your garage, keep it in your junk drawer, and you'll be prepared in the event that your AC unit quits working. If you'd like to see how to properly clean your air conditioning unit like a professional and to also save money in that regard, check out this video right here and we're gonna show you how to do a deep clean on your condensing unit, saving tons of money and making sure that your air is nice and cold all summer long. Until next time, you guys be safe. Later.